After some reflection, I'm actually going to hold for the moment on this range extension modification because first I want to kind of complete the first pass on the big picture here. So you have acquiring the data and then you have using the data. And we haven't actually talked about using it yet in terms of how you implement what you learn about the shape of this wall or whatever space you're working in. So acquiring the data part one was the last video with the basics on this, what is the concept, etc. Today I want to do part two and finish out kind of the, the acquisition flow and how you process it, right? So with this one, we're getting the profile of this line, but how do we turn that into a surface? Well, the way we turn it into a surface is by sweeping it across, or in this case, we're going to rotate it. But you need to rotate it since your lever is going to be fairly long. I mean, even in the standard configuration, which isn't big enough, it's a meter long. It's almost a meter, so let's call it a meter. A meter, two meters diameter, times three and some change, right? We're at, we're at six. Okay, so that's 6,000 millimeters around. So even if you divide and you say you have a stepper motor at 1.8 degrees, right? That, that's a really big interval. So we need to gear it down. We need to gear it down a lot. So the thing that's actually driving the rotation on this, let me zoom in. And not just slow, it needs to be at a very consistent speed. So the first thing that we have that actually drives it is just a DC gear motor here. Nothing too special. I actually took this and crimped it onto a regular connector here so that I could easily reverse the direction. I mean, you guys all get the idea, but it goes one way here and then you can flip it around and go the other way there. It's only 12 volts, so a little tape around the outside. Hey, got the job done. But this creates our motion. This is still way too fast despite whatever speed it's going at. So we go into another gearbox here. So we have a double worm drive set up here. The next question is how do we get this data out? So we have our machine set up. It's doing the sweep just fine. I showed you here the web interface, which works pretty well and has a variety of settings that you can edit to do exposure and subsampling and, and all sorts of things. But how do I get this data out of here? I need to create a fire hose where I can stream this th stuff out and log it and just make it happen quickly. So for that, they have the SDK, which they offer, which is quite good. It took me a bit to get going on it because I guess it's in C and for example, you have to name things so that they're unique within like the whole space of it, apparently. Anyway, so I found that <laughs> a bit interesting, but uh, Thank you to my friend Alex who helped me sort of get over the hump on this. There's one, for example, called Receive Profile, which was the closest to what I wanted. And then I went in and made some changes to just write it out to a text file. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying that every 100 milliseconds, I'm telling this thing to sample and then dump that entire profile to a text file. And what it's actually dumping is the timestamp that it took it and the depth and which position on the line it is. And that timestamp, since I know the rotation speed, is a proxy for the angle. And it's a proxy because before, I was just simply doing it on delay, as a delay and saying, well, I know the rotation speed directly. But that was an issue because the program was operating at different speeds depending on whatever I had going in my background on the PC, and it was causing distortions. So this wall would actually come out with a curve this way or a curve this way, depending on if how fast it thought it was rotating was different than what it actually was. So by going to a timestamp for this basic setup, that has solved that and really brought down the variability. So you compile this, you create an EXE, and it dumps it into a text file called attempt whatever. And then I have a Python program, which I use to do the math, because if you have distance, you need to know where you're pointing in order to, to get all those to line up, obviously. So that's just some basic trigonometry. Once you start correcting for angles this way and other things, it gets a little bit more complicated, but those are the basics. So once we've run that Python program, then I dump the data into an attempt XYZ and then the number file, and those are actually in coordinates. So what are we gonna view these in? Well, there's a great program called Cloud Compare, which is an open source 
point cloud software. I'm going to pull in just from one angle in terms of rotating front to back for right now. We'll get to the others later. When you bring it in, XYZ, it recognizes it's comma separated. Super simple. We bring it in and here we go. Does that look familiar? That is my garage door. Now the scanner can only see from one point of view, so you will have blank spaces behind objects that are in the front of it or occluding it. You can see that here with the piece of foam that sticks out, but the profile, it's a little hard to rotate with the mouse, but I mean, it's quite straight. I think it looks, it looks very good. You can zoom in. These are just points, just streams of points, not lines, but we can take this. It's also interesting because you can read the text here where there's a lack of return. So it didn't get a strong enough return because it was black and it absorbed the laser. So that was interesting. There's a hole in the foam there. This is also uh, part of the logo, I guess. And you can also see the fact that it's sweeping left to right as it gets closer, the beam gets a little bit smaller. And if I create the mesh, and I think I had 20 worked well previously. There we go. So here's our mesh. This is our surface that we created. So as I said, I'm still learning this. Like it seems to be some things missing here that were actually there in the original scan. But in terms of the, the main surface, it makes it a little bit easier to see once it's solid. So that's pretty cool. You know, first pass gut check, it seems like we're getting some good results that we want. So now what we need to do obviously is stitch a variety of these together to build up the full map. And what we don't want to do is fit one scan to the other in order to match them up because that would allow errors to compound. What we want to do is take our superior knowledge of where the scanner is in space, compute where the points are, and then see that they match up and that everything makes sense. So the next time I scan this with a view that's up here, it should line up. You know, the, the line here that gets scanned twice should line up. The overlaps should not be super obvious. The way that we create this front to back tilt is pretty simple. First, you raid your clamp shelf and make sure it's empty when you're done. And then we, round, we mount everything to a rotary table. So this allows me here to keep an eye on that indicator and know how many degrees I've tilted it. This is a first pass, of course, so things are a little bit rough. But basically, this is on the gearbox. The gearbox here is pinched between two aluminum parts, which are then clamped this way into the rotary table, and the rotary table can turn this way. What we're going to do now is build up a scan from four different angles. So we're gonna start where we are now, which is at zero degrees. And then we're gonna tilt this thing back by 10 degrees, 20 and 30. We're gonna sweep across here. And then with our knowledge of where the pivot point is relative to the global pivot on the rotary table and the offsets, since we know what they are and we know the different angles, then we should be able to simply place these scans next to one another and see that they match up. One property which I did not appreciate super well at the beginning, although I figured it out quickly, was that you need to know this starting angle quite accurately. And it's not just that you need to know where you start, you need to know where you start relative to basically being straight to this axis, because this scanner is sort of wrapping around, like imagine yourself inside a sphere and you're viewing part of this sphere, right? So if you're viewing straight ahead, when you correct for tilting back, you're gonna tilt back as the maximum amount when you're viewing straight ahead. Whereas if you were to point to the side, you would only tilt back a little bit. So having a consistent starting angle, consistent, and knowing what it is, is, is actually really important. So right here I have this clamp because why not one more clamp with a zip tie and there's a little dark spot on there with a marker. And so when this edge touches that, that's consistent enough for our first pass on this.
the window is actually a bit too bright for that scan, but I have equivalent data from a scan during the evening before. So this is our first scan. This is the one that was head on at zero degrees. Things look pretty good. We have good straightness on the wall. So now what we're gonna do is turn on the points when it was tilted back 10 degrees. You would expect to see more things above it. Now the interesting thing here is not that it is indeed higher, but how well it matches up. I put in rather a lot of legwork to make this happen, so I don't think that this was the first try. But if you watch this line, for example, so over here and over here, when I turn this on, there's really no change in this line. It simply adds data to it. It's not perfect, of course. I haven't really fine-tuned this thing, but it's, it's quite close, and that maintains if I rotate this around. Very good overlap. So what we want to see then is a continuation of that as we tilt our head back. And that's what we get. This one, I'm not sure exactly what went on with that one, but whatever it is, this is a demo. So it actually makes it a little bit hard to see here since it's all lines. And I haven't figured out exactly how to do a good mesh when they don't line up quite perfectly here. But just for laughs, we can do control A on this, merge our point clouds, and then we are going to generate a mesh from this. So this is gonna be a little bit jumpy because there's a little bit of mismatch in and out and side to side. Also, the I might not have put in a good threshold there for the surface, you can see that it's quite quite jumpy. There's a lot of artifacts. So I'm actually gonna go into the mesh and smooth this out. Regardless, it's gonna match that surface that we had before, but just a broader field of view. So basically I consider this uh, a total success. I mean, compared to where I started out from on this project and some previous ones, you can see here the piece of paper that I taped on over that window that had that was folded and then I unfolded it to tape it on there and you can see it. So that's pretty cool. You can actually see, I just noticed this, some of these misalignments in my correction here very slightly. Topic of the next video will be, all right, so so what do we do with this data, right? If I wanted to make something that, that matched up to this, how do I do that? How do I utilize it? Thanks a lot.